Hi everyone, I'm Cassie Sterwald, I'm the Director of Communications here at Girl Scouts of Manitou Council. And today I am with Emma, one of our recent Gold Award Girl Scouts. Um, so we're just gonna do a sort of live q and I've got some questions I'm gonna ask Emma. She's gonna share some details about her project. Um, if any time throughout this you guys have questions, feel free to just um, type them in the chat we will try and get as many answered as possible. If you have any comments too, uh, feel free to do that. So I'm gonna flip the camera around. So this is Emma. Emma, if you just wanna introduce yourself. Yeah. Hi, so um, I'm Emma, I'm part of the Manitou Council. Uh, I'm a recent Gold, Gold Award, as she just said. Uh, I got my gold, my gold Award back in January and I'm a senior currently at Lincoln High School, so I'll be graduating this year. And hopefully next year I'll be attending um, the Milwaukee School of Engineering for biomolecular engineering. So that should be exciting. Yeah, awesome. Okay, and if at any time I forgot to say this, if you're having trouble hearing us, um, just feel free to drop that in and we'll we'll speak up. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and get started. The first question I'm going to ask Emma is to just give us a run through of what she did for her project. I know I highlighted it back feels like it was a long time ago already that I highlighted this on Facebook, so some of you might remember, but um, I see a comment that we're not, we'll try and speak up a little bit, and I might move my camera a little closer to Emma. Um, okay, so just give us a run through on what your project did. <laughs> yeah, so um, back in like, Oh, probably like May or something like that. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do by, for my Girl Scout Gold Award, and uh, I was running through ideas. And I've been a part of, well, I've been working with the Domestic Violence Center for a very long time in Manitoba called Encourage, and I knew that I wanted to be able to do something with Encourage. So I finally came up with a plan to um, help them, and I saw a need in the, like their area where they would come in with nothing, because obviously they were just coming in need, and um, oftentimes they'd leave with just a garbage bag, and um, with their stuff in it, oh, there you go. I'm moving this just a little closer <laughs> so we can make sure we can hear you. Can you hear me still? Sorry guys, this is, if that was just my hand. <laughs> we're, you know, figuring this out, so we'll keep, keep talking. Okay. <laughs> okay, no problem, I just want to, okay, can you guys hear me? Nobody's commenting. <laughs> yeah, just keep okay. going and just talk nice and loud. Okay, so yeah, so just with like the garbage bag, they often like leave with nothing. They leave with the things that they came, plus a couple items like shampoo and maybe an article of clothing or two. So I wanted to give them something that they could um, have going out of the domestic violence center and have it coming in. So uh, I wanted to create bags, basically. It's a duffel bag program that I wanted to create um, where they get a pillow, a pillowcase, an article of clothing, like an outfit, so like leggings and a sweatshirt or top, and then um, like basic um, sanitary items. So like um, pads, tampons, deodorant, toothpaste, um, shampoo, conditioner, all that kind of stuff, just so they had something for their stay while at the Domestic Violence Center. center. And um, just when they leave, they have something to put their stuff in and they have something to take away from that place. So when they go on, if they get a new apartment or something like that, they have something to start out. And also, um, one thing I wanted to highlight during my Gold Award was um, awareness of domestic violence. So I really wanted to bring light to what it is, how many people it affects, and um, I wanted to spread the word in my community. So um, another thing that I did in addition to the duffel bag program was that I educated my family members, my friends, my community on what domestic violence is, how to identify it, how to get help, um, just a bunch of those basic things. So people, if they ever encountered a situation or had family or friends that were in need, they were able to um, get them out and help them. So that was another big part of my project. <laughs> awesome. Um, so far, we just have a few comments. Uh, most people can hear us fine, which is good. Um, we'll do our best to make sure we're talking nice and loud. Um, we are, you know, this is new to us, so I'm on my phone. We're live streaming from a phone, so Emma's currently about as close as she can get to the mic. Um, 
So we'll keep that. Um, we did have one question pop through and a Denise, I think we're gonna answer that in just a minute. So I'm gonna hold off. Um, she, Denise, who is our, if you don't know, she is the CEO of Girl Scouts of Manitou Council. She would like to know what are some of the things that you did to help get the word out um, to the community? Yeah, so obviously COVID really put a um, big roadblock in my plans. I did not anticipate COVID being like throughout my project. So um, that was a whole challenge within itself. But um, mostly I use social media as many of us have. And um, I also contacted like um, various people and I went actually to their house it was more individual visits. I wish I could have done um, more group meetings, but obviously with school not running, clubs not really running, um, everyone was just kind of sitting at home isolated. So I decided to have more one-on-one, -on -one, more in-depth conversations. It was actually really nice because they could give me questions. Um, we could have more um, flow of conversation and really help them understand it on a deep level. So I have to do that with about, so I made about 20 bags, so about um, like, I want to say I probably reached about 100 to 150, maybe 200 people about like the domestic violence, and then I had actually um, maybe like 50 people help with the domestic um, violence bags, and all of those people I, I told about um, everything that I went, so the how to get help, um, how to identify it, and where to go, and places to call, and all that kind of stuff. So everyone that was involved in my project got to know about that. Awesome. And I know, I think you did some like flyer posters yeah, right. too. Yeah, no, I know. It was so hard to think of everything, but um, yeah, I had to be kind of creative about how to do that. So actually my sister goes to St. Norbert College up in Green Bay and I decided to um, put up some flyers about domestic violence. Again, with the things that I was saying, because those were the three main things I want to talk about, how to get help, um, where to go and the signs of domestic violence. So I created a poster. Um, it was really eye-catching with like red, um, uh, and then I just posted like signs, bullet points, so people when they were passing they could read that. And I also connected with a couple of people while I was at St. Norbert, so that was pretty cool. Awesome. Um, and we got another question that came through um, about, was this just for the Manitowoc Domestic Violence Center? Yeah, so basically just the Doko Bakes were for the Manitowoc Domestic Violence Center, but obviously the awareness was just for everyone. Um, I put in the Domestic Violence National Hotline. Um, I also talked about like different places to get help in like Green Bay. There's so many domestic violence shelters in Wisconsin, but I mainly just connected with my Manitowoc one. Yeah. Just because especially with COVID and stuff, it was very difficult to go other places yeah. <laughs> and get other people involved. So, yeah. 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 And I definitely, it's such a cool concept. It could definitely apply oh, to yeah, definitely. everywhere, you yeah, know? It would be awesome to be able to get other domestic violence domestic violence shelters involved with this project but I think that definitely once COVID restrictions lighten up that might be a little bit easier to do. We got some more great questions coming in so make sure we get to them all guys we're kind of some of them we're going to try and go in like some sort of order instead of jumping around so while um, we're talking about her project I'm going to ask Emma how what made her decide to earn her gold award? Yeah, so, um, you know, it's a big uh, undertaking. Yeah. So uh, how yeah. did you decide that this is what you wanted to do? So I've been a Girl Scout like most of my life. I can't remember really the time that I was not a Girl Scout. I think like kindergarten I started. Uh, it's always been a really, good, really big part of my life. And um, ever since I was young, I loved volunteering. Like um, every time I was in school, I was always joining Key Club, um, Builders Club, all um, volunteer organizations, volunteering my time. And um, just recently, I... Um, I obtained both my silver and my um, bronze award, and those basically made me want to do my gold. And I also saw my sister and so many other Girl Scouts getting their gold award, and I thought that that was a really awesome opportunity to identify a really big need in your community. So, um, yeah, that's basically why I decided, because I wanted to ultimately finish Girl Scouts and do the most that I could for that club. <laughs> yeah, you answered two of my other questions in that. I was going to ask how long you'd been in Girl Scouts and if you'd had earned your bronze or silver. So, yes, she's been a Girl Scout for as long as she can yes. remember, and she did earn both her bronze and silver award before deciding to go for gold. Yeah. Um, so kind of going along this, and this is, we're getting to some of these questions here, too. Um, like I said, it's a big pro you know, it's a big undertaking. So when you were starting, what were some of your biggest fears or your, you know, what were you worried about as you were getting started? <laughs> yeah, so when I started, I had so many fears. This is a really um, big project and I've, no I've like heard so many stories about it. It's taking a long time to plan. 
Um, I bet one of my biggest concerns was probably like the time commitment because I knew that you had to have 80 hours down. Um, I'm, I was working 20 hours a week, 15 to 20 hours a week. I was in school. I had so many, uh, I wanted to hang out with friends still. I had um, club obligations. Um, I was on sports. So just like, I was like, I can't even imagine like how am I going to have the time to do this? But um, like everything, you can find time. Like you can always find time to do something that you're really passionate about. So um, that was my biggest concern and it was definitely something that I had to overcome. But <laughs> I think that overall, like spacing it out through the months, it was pretty easy to get through the time constraint. Awesome. <laughs> Um, and going along with that, with all these things, what did you learn about yourself? Um, how did you grow yeah. from the start to the finish? <laughs> so um, I've been like pretty good with time management through my life because I've been involved in so many things, but this really highlighted it and like sticking with something, like it really showed how persistent I am. I like, obviously like there were underlying thoughts of giving up but I never gave up I stuck with it COVID yeah it was a big problem but I decided that I wanted to be a problem solver and continue with this project and jump over the hurdles find new ways to reach people um, find new ways to help the domestic violence center even though it was a difficult time and I had no like I didn't have much time so it was definitely something that I just needed to push through and I, I found that I can do anything I put my mind to Awesome. The biggest thing that I found. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and we had just Denise commented, "Love it. She loves your quote that you can you can find time to do something you're passionate about." She loves that quote. So, just a shout out to that. Um, going along with that, um, who was kind of on your support team? Who was there helping you throughout this journey? Yeah, so like I said, it was a very challenging thing trying to find time and just keep me motivated. But I would say that my family was definitely the biggest in this whole journey. Um, my parents were constantly supporting me. Um, also, uh, ultimately when there was a time, because um, my first plan, I wanted to actually involve like my schools, the elementary schools, but when I found out that schools weren't running, everything was gonna be online, that was the biggest struggle. And I, that really like hit home to me, because I was like, wow, everything that I was planning, I was planning to join the clubs, talk about it at clubs, go to big group meetings, do an auditorium thing, and all of that was just kind of flushed down the drain. So um, when that happened about in August, my parents were there and like we had a whole talk about it and we were like, okay, well, where do we want to go? Like, and I definitely couldn't have done that on my own. Like, I just needed some supporters there to tell me like, it's going to be okay. Like, we're going to figure out what you want to do. Like, we're going to do this no matter what. So that basically having them and my brother and sister like willing to help me was just amazing. And I wouldn't have had it. I would not have made it through this project without them. So those were my biggest supporters. And obviously... My um, um, friends and family friends were just amazing supporters. They helped me through the project. They don't, were constantly helping me spread the word, join the items. They were sharing my posts on Facebook and Instagram. It was just a really awesome opportunity to have them with me. I know they'll be excited to see that. I see a few names popping up that I think are your relatives. So <laughs> they'll be happy to hear that. Um, we had a few questions come in. Um, one is about funding. How did you, you know raise money or enough what did you how did you get yeah. enough money to do all this so um i was actually blessed with um family and friends who were willing to donate and spend their money to help my project so i had um i had one family friend actually donate like 20 duffel bags i think like double just she got them off of amazon she was like oh yeah like i would love to help you this way in my project after i told her about it and so she actually got those bags and then i um I then from there, so since I had those, then I brought those duffel bags to other people and then they were able to put items in them. So basically my project, my whole idea was I didn't really want to have to like fundraise too too much for anything. So basically I just um, I just had other people bring the stuff in and then created the project around that. And um, I think that yeah, basically it was just a whole donations and people really wanted to help. Once I told yeah, them. I think part of your, your whole education process, once yeah. you start talking about it, it's hard. You know, you want to get involved <laughs> no, and you exactly. want to help. Exactly, and people were so passionate about it, just like me, and they wanted, like, I was getting so many donations, so many things. Um, I Yeah, they were helping in any way they could, which is really awesome. <laughs> yeah, and Denise just popped up and just, I'll say this so everyone can hear. Um, 
Uh, Manitou Council does have grant programs to help Gold Award Girl Scouts. So if you are, yeah. you know, thinking of doing your Gold Award and are worried about the funding, there's grants, um, all kinds of different options for funding. We got some great questions coming up here. So this is phenomenal. I was, I was really excited about hearing your questions. Um, how long did this take? Like from, let's talk a little bit about the process. Like, you know, yeah. how did you start first? What did you have to do? How long did the whole, the whole process take? Okay, so um, I've basically been thinking about my goal award. I'm really trying to think back. But, um, so I think that like my initial thoughts, so actually I had a project that I like wanted to do but actually didn't get approved. And I'm thankful that it didn't because it was something that wasn't completely thought through and I just, I didn't think it through and it wasn't completely passionate about it. But that was like probably beginning of junior year maybe, I think like that. And then I took some time and then I thought about it a little bit more. And then at the end of junior year, I actually came to a, the Domestic Violence Center and I was like, wow, like why didn't I think of this before? Because that was something that I was super passionate about. So um, about like March slash May, I think like between those months, I finally started writing out my proposal and I got it sent in. And then um, I started my um, Gold Award in June, and then I ended about just like beginning of the December months, I think. So it took a little bit longer than I was anticipating, but with everything that happened, I'm just happy that I was able to accomplish everything that I did in those months. Yeah, I, it's, it's so a long it, process. Yeah. You it know? definitely did take me a little bit longer. I was not expecting it that, um, to take me that long, but um, I was able to reach a lot more people through having it take a little bit longer, so yeah. ultimately it worked out. <laughs> I like how you pointed out that you had a different idea to start with, yeah. and because I think that's pretty pretty common. You think you know what you want to do, and the more you start thinking about it, and exactly. it's, yeah. And, like, you just really have to, like, you're going to have ideas like how great things come to be, and you have to have backup plans, you have to have um, things that didn't work out, and then you come to this project that actually is amazing, and, like, you love it, and you're so passionate about it and like you actually want to work towards that so that just have it just it takes a little bit sometimes <laughs> we'll get there yeah awesome and that someone i had this question too who asked this let me just see diane asked a question about what advice do you have for someone um, that's thinking about going for their gold award but isn't sure if they can do it and i had a similar question written down on my list diane yeah um totally what i would say is like 100 percent go for it like you can do anything you put your mind to and that's a quote that i live by because you can take as many months as you'd like to do this and that, like you just have to find something that you like in your community that you're passionate about that you feel like you could put 80 hours of work into or more <laughs> and you just like you have the time you'll be able to find the time you'll be able to find something that you're passionate about and you'll be able to help your community in like some way that you can find yeah, hundred percent. I'd say go for it. You can do it. Great advice. I know it does seem scary. I mean, you know, thinking, how do I start this? Yeah. Just, just do it, and it'll all fall exactly. into place. And like brainstorm, and just take time to think through it, and you'll you'll get there. Um, let me just let see if any other questions have came through. Um, I'll pull, I'll pull up one of mine. Keep these questions are awesome. So keeping them keep them coming. I know you talked a little bit about um, the COVID, COVID, yeah. how it's impacted. I mean, do you want to just talk a little bit more? I think it's really inspiring that you did this entire project um, during COVID, you know? Yeah. Um, like you were adjusting, doing school completely, you know, you had so many things in your life changing and yeah. yet this still happened. So is there anything else you wanted to mention about? Yeah, so basically like COVID was, a big stopper and I think that like I touched on it but I'll summarize again so like basically I was going to do everything with school well not everything but I was going to do a majority of my things with school clubs um, like pre like talking to my teachers all that kind of stuff but everything was kind of stopped in that sense in that sense so I had to figure out a new way and then um, with COVID I think there was also like I did um, my original plan that was the biggest thing I did not anticipate COVID happening till like literally now. Still like, now, yeah. <laughs> right. I was, um, probably when I was finishing this and submitting it, I was like, yeah, COVID's probably gonna be done by like November, September, like we'll be fine. Like school's gonna start up again. Like it's not gonna be a problem. And 
that was the biggest shock, like not being able to do that, having to wear masks, not being able to be in large groups and having to do everything technological based. So that was just the biggest thing. Um, I'm trying to think specifically again. I know, I only know all this because I read your final report. Um, oh, that there was times when like you couldn't meet with certain yes, people at Encourage yes. because of um, oh, yeah. quarantining I and... There were so many things that it's just hard to remember <laughs> single thing that happened. But yeah, so um, my first day, because I made a little video that I wanted to um, share and I was trying to coordinate it with the Encourage Domestic Violence um, coordinator. And the first meeting, she got sick, so she had COVID. So she had to quarantine for two weeks. So I had to push back my filming date until like the end of August. And that was a big stressor because then I was like, well, what if I'm not free? Like, oh, and then so that happened. And then actually um, another time I was trying to drop off the bags to, domestic violence, to the domestic violence shelter. And um, she actually had a family issue because of COVID. So that was another two weeks that I had to wait to actually drop them off. And then she came back and she was like, I still can't come, like there's another family member that I need to take care of. So I actually had to coordinate with another person to <laughs> actually come and physically drop off the bag. So that was a challenge in itself. And um, yeah, actually, so in the beginning, I had a um, project leader that I was like all set, like she was the one that helped me with like my volunteering for my gold award. And she actually ended up moving. So that was hard, not um, having my project leader actually move. And I was like, oh boy, like how am I gonna continue without her? Because she was my coordinator to everything. So she actually had to connect me with Kara, the person that I was um, coordinating with. And that was just a struggle, trying to learn a new person and not being able to see them, uh, not knowing really anything about them. So that was a struggle because of COVID. Yeah, there's been, I mean, not being able to see people yeah. is so hard. I mean, oh, just yeah. for all of you watching, I've been talking with Emma via email for months, and today is the first day we've actually gotten to see each other. So, That's so many things with my gold board. I've had to email, like, my email skills have, oh, they're good now because of my gold board, COVID, everything like that. I've sent, oh my goodness, like, probably hundreds of emails, and you just have to get so used to it. It's so weird not being able to, like, talk face to face. It's so weird. <laughs> yes. Um, so that's why I'm glad we were able to do this. Yes. Um, we did have a few more questions, good questions come through. Um, Denise is wondering if you've mentioned your gold award um, on any of your college applications or in scholarships oh, yes. or yes. anything like that. The gold award is such an amazing like, accomplishment and I am like shouting it from the rooftops as that was one of the um, prompts. But um, I've mentioned it in every scholarship application that I have. I've um, talked about it in essays, and I've also um, I've wrote it in my college applications. And yeah, it's very nice to put on an application, and it, um, it's a great accomplishment. I mean, why wouldn't you put it on there? So or talk about it. So yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. great to hear that you're so um, proud of your <laughs> being. It's good to be proud of yourself in a situation yes, like yes. this. So it's good to hear that you're you are taking pride in everything you've accomplished. Yeah. Um, couple more awesome questions. Um, did you get to hear anything about what the people that actually utilize Encourage, did you hear from anyone about um, yeah. so it's been what an of, impact it made? Yeah, so it's been kind of hard to be able to go there because they're still not really the, like, limiting the number of volunteers. You have to go through the whole process and now you have to be vaccinated. So it's just kind of hard for me to go specifically. But um, Kara has emailed me and she said that the impact has been amazing. The bags have been well received. People are loving them. Um, it's just, she said that it's really nice to be able to see that they can give something right away, just like a bag with everything that they need for their stay. It's just super amazing and they've been well received and they've been using them a lot. So that's awesome. Yeah, um, along with that, Denise also wanted to know um, about how many bags you were able to donate. I don't know if you said it or yeah, yeah, you no. missed it. So um, I actually ended up donating, I think it was 22 completely full bags. And I was originally planning on doing like more like 50, but just with COVID restrictions, um, knowing how many people I could get, money was tight for a lot of people. So that was um, something I didn't want to put pressure on. Uh, I didn't want this project to make their, um, I just, I didn't want that to influence the money. I didn't want that to be a big problem. So uh, 22 bags is about what we did. Um, it was like one per family. So um, that was really nice. And then um, we also had a couple bags that were just um, just there, like they weren't completed or anything. I think we sent about like 15 more maybe, maybe, that were just like the duffel bags. 
that they could fill with pillows or whatever donations came in from the past months so they could continue. Did you um, get any estimates on like how long that 20 something stuff last? Did they give you yeah. any indication of that? So uh, I talked with Sarah a lot at the beginning of our project and um, they still have bags right now. So that's a good sign that it's continuing. Um, but I think that they have about 14 people like a capacity at the domestic violence shelter. So um, originally I was hoping that people, their 22 bags would last about a year. And um, that seems, we'll see if that happens because they've had a couple more um, cases and sometimes they're at capacity. So um, hopefully about a year, I think that like the supply that I gave them will last, but we'll see. Um, and, oh, what did I just do to my, don't want to mess anything up here. <laughs> I touched something, okay. Um, I was thinking about, I know because I saw pictures that you did some, you worked with some like area hospitals and you put out like yeah. information or donation sites. Do you want to yeah. talk about that a little yeah. bit? So um, I, my parents are physicians at Holy Family and um, I was trying to get other bags and like trying to get other people involved that like I don't personally know because like I have, to, I would have to go through the process of texting them or emailing them being like, hey, would you be willing to complete a bag? And then, like, telling them about it and be like, I can meet with you at this time. Would you be able to, willing to take that? So um, my parents were willing to take a um, box, and I had about, like, I want to say 10 to 15 duffel bags um, in there and a note about how they could fill it and what I, my project is, who I am, because I physically couldn't go into the hospital and talk to them because of COVID restrictions. So um, they took, a, they took a, yeah, like a box about this big, and I had like, a little picture of me, and a whole like um, document with what I was about, like I'm a Girl Scout. Here's what my project is. I'd love if you would help me. And then they had two sheets, and then uh, people would take them, take them home to their families, and then send me pictures about what like they put in the bags, and um, then we connect that way. And I think we had about like nine to ten um, people from the hospital actually contribute. So that was really awesome. Amazing. Yeah. And kind of going along with COVID and the hospitals, I know I think you also donated face masks, right? Yeah. In so, there, because that's a that's a yeah. big thing, right? I mean, everyone needs those right now. So yeah. So we actually put about two face masks um, in there, and there was um, like two ladies or three ladies that actually um, could, like made handmade face masks to fill the bags. So I think actually I was planning on two face masks originally, but. I think everyone got about three in their bags because there were so many donations to face masks and we also had disposable ones that we just put in there as well. Awesome. Um, I'll just read you some of the positive comments we're getting too. Um, so glad that young women still have still that young women still have the enthusiasm and commitment to reach the pinnacle of Girl Scouting. Shout out to all the Girl Scouts of Manitou and all the leaders and volunteers for their inspiration. So that was a great message, Diane. Thank you for sharing that. We got a few. Emma, you're very inspiring. Um, Denise shares that she has a friend uh, that's a college reviewer who puts a lot of um, credence to the goal of the world. So really keep shouting it out. <laughs> um, I'm sure at this point you aren't sure if, um, I know you are probably into college, but about scholarships, you might not know yet if you've. Yeah. Um, I know that actually in one of my scholarship applications, a interviewer I had an interview for the scholarship application and they actually did comment on my gold award and they were like oh yeah like I saw that you talked about like some challenges that we had and we went into that and yeah we just talked about it for a little bit and he was like yeah that was an awesome project I'm like I'm I'm impressed that you were able to do it during COVID. I was like, thank you. Yes, this is what Denise says, too. She says, the way that you persevered through COVID is so inspirational. And I think it is. I mean, whenever I hear about what you guys have accomplished when the world was crazy, know, you know? know? It's just it was, inspiring to yeah. hear. It was hard to adapt, but it happens. Um, this is something not necessarily learned about yourself, but what's just something, a new skill or a new piece of information that you learned while you were working on all of this? Yeah, um, definitely having like the ability to like have a informational conversation one-on-one. -on -one. I know that kind of sounds interesting, but like being able to have like, like where you're educating someone else and but you're having like a constructive conversation at the same time. I've definitely learned how to do that. It's hard to explain, but like where you're like telling them how to do it and they're like coming back with questions. It's different than a presentation because like a presentation, like you're just naming off things 
you're constantly going, like, you have oh, your script, yeah, you, 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 have you have your script, and yeah, you have your script, and you're like, oh, yeah, here's what's happening, like the bullet points, you have your slideshow, but when you have to go to someone's house and be like, yeah, so this is my project, like, they're gonna stop you and ask questions, it's more of a conversation than a presentation, so that was an adjustment, but um, also it, it was something to get used to, and I eventually did, so that was really yeah, I mean, that's gonna be a skill I'm sure you'll use yes. <laughs> in many years to come, so. Yes. It's it's nice to see that you learn you learn you literally learn so much so much about yourself and so many different skills from working on yes. it. Um, we've got lots of so inspiring. Be proud of yourself. Um, this kind of I know you might have touched on it a little bit, but how did you stay motivated while this? I mean, I'm sure there were times when you were. <laughs> I can't do this anymore, and uh, you know, know, so how, I know you talked about your family being a great support system, but what are some of the ways that yeah. helped you stay motivated? I just, um, like, I just knew that I wanted to do this, and I saw it was a big need in the domestic violence community, especially in my um, specific uh, domestic violence shelter in Courage. So, like, just knowing that, like, my impact is actually going to help them. So I wanted to continue like, I wanted to make these bags, and I wanted to give them to them, because I already had all the supplies, like, everything was in place, I just needed to keep going. And it's so hard when you're, like, at the beginning, seeing the end product, but I just knew that I could do it, and, like, I was just kept pushing, and I was like, you can do this, it was a lot of self-motivation, it was a lot of family motivation, and it was just reflection, like, you can do this, like, it's okay, we got this, it's going to end, like, you're going to have this project done, like, Pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. No, that makes sense. I mean, thinking like, you know, you're making such an impact. I feel like even that, just knowing like, I'm doing this and it's going to make a huge impact is yeah, motivation like, itself. Especially, like, you can't tell them, like, you can't coordinate everything and be like, yeah, I'm going to, like, create these couple of days and then all of a sudden not. So it was just something that I was like, you have to keep going. Like, you can't give up. You're not a quitter. Like, you're just going to, you're just going to finish this. And so I did. And that was yeah. pretty awesome. Um, let's see what other questions we have. Um, we just got a, you're handling interviews well, and just to be totally clear, some of the, like most of these questions are off the top of our heads, so Emma did not like have a script prepared for this or anything. So yes, she's doing phenomenal. Um, and Denise said, great point, person to person conversation is becoming a lost skill, so it will serve you well yes. in the future, especially with, you know, everything being, Digital for the past year. It was definitely an adjustment in like the moment too because I mean we went into quarantine about like March I think it was yeah, yeah right as my spring break ended and um, I lost like I wasn't talking to anybody because we were all in isol like self isolation basically for like three or four months so just going back and seeing people was a big adjustment yeah seeing people face to face I know like I did a couple FaceTime calls but it was mostly like just texting email and that's a lot easier to do than face to face. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Have you thought about at all, like, have you had any things on how this project might live on, even though you're done with it now? Um, yeah, so, um, the domestic violence shelter, um, Kara, I've actually been in contact with still, and, um, she's plans, because they have, like, um, like, annual donation centers, like, they do it at, like, supermarkets, like, festivals, kind of stuff, so they might start asking for, um, these bags in the future, and she said that, you know, like, if the project is well-received and these, um, next months and the year will like continue with this project. Also, people who participated in my project are going to continue it for me. They um, talk to me and they want to continue with the Encourage Domestic Violence Shelter um, volunteering there and donating the items that they donated in the past. So that's awesome. how it will hopefully live on in the future. Yeah, and I'm sure, you know, as things hopefully come back to normal sometime, things can, it'll be interesting to see how it adapts or changes to in the future. Exactly. And Diane has a great question here. She said, did you have any friends who were working on their gold awards at the same time? Did you know anyone else who was working on a gold um, award at the same time? Personally, no. I actually did not know anyone that was working on a gold award at the same time. No. Okay. Yeah, that's because, I mean, that would be an interesting thing, too, to see. I'm sure that would I be know. a motivation. Yeah. That you would could talk to somebody that would understand all the, yeah, no, everything. Yeah, I did have um, a friend thinking about doing a gold award, but... Um, just with everything going on, it was a challenge for her to get started, so um, eventually that didn't start off, but it was still good to see people trying and trying to think about it, but no, I did not have anybody with me. Um, let's 
let's see. I have uh, just one simple question. I'm just here excited to hear your answer. Do you have a favorite memory from working on your, like one thing that really sticks out to you um, as yeah. a great moment from your project? Oh boy, there's so many. I gotta think about it. Honestly, probably dropping off my bags was a really big like moment. Um, it wasn't like it wasn't anything like special, but it was just it like really showed me that like I finally did it, and I was just like super happy seeing that like I was putting them in there, and I was like finally like giving them away, and I was like like my project was now their project, and like just handing it off. That was probably like a special moment for me, one of the most special, just seeing that, and just also going through all the pictures when I was doing my final report. That was probably like one of my favorite memories, like looking at all like the fifty pictures that I submitted and writing comments and seeing the people that were involved and everyone was just smiling with their like the bag and it was really neat to see. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's been great to hear cuz I've, you know, been working with Emma for a few months here. Um it's really good to hear now hear your in your words everything. I know. So this has been great. Um Diane just wants to say embarking on this and being individually molded is even more impressive mm -hmm. that you didn't have anyone else that you were, you know, bouncing ideas off of, I mean, you did, but I not, know. you didn't have another uh, well, just, Girl Scout working yeah. on a gold award. It's super hard, especially, like, even if I did have another Girl Scout, like, how much contact we could actually be in because of COVID, and, I mean, I was basically just at home with my family most of the time, so that was just stressful, but um, it worked out in the end. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you had to, like, start over, do it all over again, what would you do differently? Oh my goodness. Um, I would definitely have a plan B because I had a plan and I was like, well, if COVID continues, like, this is kind of what I'll do. But like, I never had like a full flesh, like, this is what's going to happen, like, in the case of COVID continuing past. Um, so that was the biggest struggle, not having a plan B because I started my project, everything was going fine, and then I realized that nothing was going back to normal, uh, like I said before. So just Having ideas and knowing where I could go if I got stuck. That would probably be where I'd start again, but um, trying to think back. Yeah, just having that plan B so then your next plan can be just as well thought of as the first one. Good. Um, we'll wait, see if any other questions. I got a few, um, a few other ones that aren't necessarily related to your gold award. I know um, you have been in Girl Scouts your whole life. Do you have a favorite Girl Scout memory? Oh, yes. Um, I have so many. So actually, my troop, like, it was, like, a fun thing that we do almost every year is go to the school forest. And there we'd, like, learn fire skills. We'd do, um, like, first aid kits. We'd go down to the beach, do all that kind of stuff. And those weeks were definitely my favorite memories of Girl Scouts. Learning, um, <laughs> I've learned so many skills in Girl Scouts that I can't even list them all off. But definitely, like, fire making, that was always one of my, um, favorite memories. We make marshmallows and marshmallows are like one of my favorite foods. <laughs> so uh, doing that and being able to create something like from nothing, just like fire. It's just, uh, that was probably one of my favorite memories. It was, it was always a really fun time. Um, and someone had asked us earlier, but I was kind of waiting until we um, finished up talking a little bit about your gold award. Um, what advice do you just in general have for younger Girl Scouts? Like, you know, stay, what, what would you tell yeah. them? tell them like stay in Girl Scouts like it'll give you so many skills in the future and it'll look good not everything has to just look good like an application but it shows that you were dedicated to something and you can really do so many things with Girl Scouts there's so many amazing opportunities within Girl Scouts and like if you eventually did stay in it for the Gold Award it's just a really awesome project to be able to do so, like it's finally something that you can do on your own it's like the stepping stone but I think that just continue with it. Take advantage of Girl Scouts, the skills that they, they teach you, and like keep them with you because there's gonna be a point in time when you're on your own and you're actually gonna need to know those things. So that's one thing that I'd say, just stick with it. It's really fun and you build so many great relationships. Awesome. Um, I know you mentioned this earlier, but some people have been coming and going. So um, do you just wanna talk again about how you thought of this idea for your Gold Award project? Yeah, so um, I was volunteering at Encourage probably um, the middle of my sophomore year. That, that's when I started um, off and on. It was for like NHS, 
um, just in general, helping out where they needed it, sorting items. And um, I was like, well, they have, it's, there's so many things that they need. And um, they were really in need of like all items. They were always looking for volunteers. And I was like, well, this would just be like an amazing project. Like I'd love to help them in this way and continue on and spread the word of domestic violence because it's hard to do that in times of COVID and just in general. So I figured that that's basically how I do it. Just um, I saw the thing that I was passionate about and then continued to do that. Awesome. And I think you brought up a good point about um, that it, it was still really important to educate people about this during COVID because it wasn't an issue that stopped, you know? It, oh, exactly. And if anything, there might have been more yeah. Um, you yeah, know, there incidents. Yeah, there were a lot more um, cases of domestic violence in the United States. They were rising because everyone was at home, locked up. Not locked up, but just you were at home like with your family, and that brought up a lot of problems. And the, the, in, the cases, the number of cases of domestic violence actually increased. So it was probably a good thing that I did that right in that time. So it all worked out in the end. Um, I'm assuming I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Um, do you plan to still continue to be involved with um, educating about domestic violence yes, and yes. volunteering in the future? Um, especially with this book project, it's, it's always going to have a special place in my heart. Um, I love volunteering at places, giving my time, seeing the smiles that I can bring to them. So um, even in college, I hope to um, start a domestic violence, like um, a volunteer club that we can help the domestic violence shelters or even volunteer uh, also, continue with Encourage. That is definitely a big thing that I would like to do in the future. Um, I got a few more questions here. I know you mentioned this too at the beginning, but I'm not sure if everyone heard it. Um, you're graduating this year, a few more months, yeah, right? Yeah, few more months. Um, and I know you mentioned where you're going, but what are, you know, just briefly or as detailed as you want, I guess, some of your plans for the future? Yeah, so um, next year I am going to attend the Milwaukee School of Engineering and um, hopefully be staying in the honors dorm. I'll be going into um, biomolecular engineering, which is just like bio, um, biological molecules, looking more in depth than those. Um, I can also like engineer proteins and um, I make a lot of models in that hopefully. And then like I could create insulin hopefully in the future, which would be super awesome. That's something I'm super interested um, in. And eventually, I'm not exactly sure, um, it's all up in the air, but maybe medical school is in my future after my undergrad, so we'll see. That's eventually maybe where I'd like to end up, somewhere in the medical field, helping people um, with science. So that just, awesome. that's something that I'd like to do. Cool. Really cool to hear about that. And how do you think that Girl Scouts has kind of helped prepare you for all of this? Yeah, so Girl Scouts has taught me some great skills, like about myself especially, and this project has taught me that I'm a problem solver, like I'll persevere, I can do anything I put my mind to. And like I said before, that's just like something that is very important to my to myself because like you have to constantly remind yourself you can do anything like you can do it if you really want it you can do it and that's what Girl Scouts taught me like there's been so many times that I've wanted to give up and like Girl Scouts oh it's so much time it's like such a commitment but you can do it and like it teaches you so many things that like you want in the future and that has prepared me for my college because I know that my undergrad is not going to be easy but I'm going to push through it and like Girl Scouts has taught me just keep going like you can do it you're going to learn so many things from it. Just keep those and you'll do it. You'll finish and you'll be there. So that's my awesome. Oh, yeah. Is there anything that else you want to share that you haven't, um, we haven't talked about? Uh -huh. Anything you want to clarify or? I'm trying to think and nothing's, coming, nothing's really coming to my mind. No. Let me just, I let me. Talk about. There's so many questions. Yeah, I know. Let me just make sure I didn't miss any um, as they're coming through. I'm trying to multitask. <laughs> um, just a few great comments that brains and heart from you. Oh, wow, Emma. <laughs> um, yeah, I just think you've pointed. You've done such a great job. It's wonderful to hear how proud of yourself you are and that you you know accomplished so much in this past year yeah. when a year I know it's crazy to think that it's been so long ago but um everything that's happened I'm just I'm, I'm glad it did and honestly I wouldn't take anything back from this project it, it just taught me so much and yeah awesome um well that's kind of the all the questions I have we can give it a few minutes if anybody um if you have an, anything else you want to ask Emma 
um, we'll type them in and we can, if I might let Emma take a breather here, grab a drink if she needs it, um, and we can answer any other questions you have. Otherwise, we'll wrap up. Um, I will be, just so everybody that's watching knows, I will be saving this video so that you can go back and rewatch it again or if um you know you're just if you're a troop leader but you're not you want to watch it with your troop now after hearing this it will be saved um so you guys will be able to revisit it um and we'll probably share out that link to it too in the future so yes um we got some best wishes to you good luck in the future um awesome just some great things i'll give it another minute to see if anyone has any more like last minute burning questions for you before we wrap up. Uh, <laughs> All right, well, um, I'm gonna turn the camera back to me for a second. Uh, I'll take my mask off so I can talk. Um, thank you all, all of you for um, listening to this. It's been great, I was, you know, this is kind of the first time we've ever done something like this. Um, so it's just been really great to hear all of your questions. Oh, and I do have one more question that came through. So I am going to ask you that. Okay. Um, did you sell any cookies this year? Um, with everything going on in school, actually, school starts up, I did not sell any cookies this year. Um, it was just a lot. And personally, for me, um, I just didn't have the time. And I know I said that you can find time for anything, but um, cookie sales was just something that I was not able to take part in this year. And I'm sure you've done it in the past. I have always, oh, yeah. <laughs> we were always a fan that would buy like seven boxes and then we'd freeze them and we'd have them all year round. Oh, yes. I even, um, though I don't sell cookies, I definitely support everyone that I see. People have come to me, I bought like five boxes. We see them at the festival booths and I buy a couple boxes just to. Support each other, like you can, like it's fun. It's fun, it is. And I remember those years of sitting in festival and selling cookies with my mom, so. Awesome. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, that was just one more question that came through, so I wanted to um, have just Emma answer that. Um, we're gonna finish up. Um, thank you all for watching. It's been so great. Um, yeah, it was great to hear all your questions. Thanks for tuning in. Um, and we will wrap up and I'll make sure to get this saved so we can watch it again in the future. Um, I'll turn it back to you, Emma, if you want to say anything else. Yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. It was fun to talk about my project. And I mean, I haven't really been able to do anything um, with COVID being on, like no presentations or anything like that. But yeah, thanks for coming. It was really nice to answer all your questions. And um, yeah, thank you. All right. Okay, sorry for the...